aren't I handsome? They're here. I'm cool. One more word and I'll slice you off. <sighs> the future. It's fucked. Future's fucked. What are we talking about? I got a big hat on. It must be Vampire Hunter D. Talk to the hand. Vampire Hunter D is rated M for mature because there's nipples. They're really tiny 80s nipples. Let's be honest, the 1985 version of Vampire Hunter D has not aged well. The voice acting isn't all that great. They're all really bland with all their lines, especially D. He's like, don't worry about it, Doris. So, you revealed yourself. It's just all stoic. He doesn't really have a lot of lines, and the lines he delivers, they're... Not that great. You really have to be a fan of 80s anime to appreciate this one like I do. No, it's not the art style. It's a nostalgic 80s art style. The art style is fine. The way it's animated is alright. It's kind of cheap. You can tell they kind of cheap out on a lot of scenes, especially D. There's just a scene where he goes like this, and then you hear the splat noise, and then he's like this. They didn't even animate him doing anything, right? It's like, come on, guys. He's the star. He doesn't even move. He's so handsome, he doesn't even have to move. Handsome. Killer looks dead. So it starts out, there's Doris, and she's a monster hunter. We're not exactly sure what she's hunting. It looks like some sort of weird dinosaur vampire thing. She kills it, blows its freaking head off. And then a werewolf shows up, runs off with the dead horse, strips her of her cross, and then she gets attacked by the vampire, and now she's been infected. He's bitter. She needs help. Well, first of all, she's standing in this field. It's like the windiest field ever, right? There's like little rocks that are flying. They're just hitting her in the face, and she's all... And then finally, once D comes up the hill, she attacks him. He like literally does nothing and defeats her with his tall, dark, and handsomeness. Jesus. His name is D. He showed up. He's wearing 80s blue, which is representative of black, because it's the 80s. That's all we know about him. He's D. He's the Vampire Hunter. He's Vampire Hunter D. There's Doris. Her name also starts with a D. Are you picking up on anything? There's Doris. She's your infected damsel in distress. There's her brother Dan, who is running around with loaves of bread on his shoulder. Then there's the vampires. You have Count Magnus Lee. He's the big badass of the feature. You have his underlings, his daughter Lamika, who is a super bitch with a really, really bad Transylvanian accent. God, the accent was terrible. Let's say it. And then you have, what's his name? Ragansi. Ragansi's like a douchebag with the cool-ass 80s mullet. If Vampire Hunter D was being shot live action, Ragansi would be played by David Bowie. Ragansi. And then we have Dr. Fearing. He's a friend of Doris's. He's been there since she was a little girl. Dr. Fearing. Where are we? We are in the mecha future. It's the year 12,000 something. We're in the future. We don't know where it is. Everything's all fucked up. This could be Europe. This could be Asia. This could be Southern California. We don't know. Everything's fucked. It's been 10,000 years since the last great war, you know, because he's walking through the catacombs and his little weird hand is talking to him and goes, oh, look at all this destruction from 10,000 years ago. We don't know what's up with the hand. It's a mutant. He's got, like, some sort of mutant hand. But his hand fucking talks to him, and the very first time his hand talks to him in the feature, if you don't know anything about Vampire Hunter D, you're not really sure who's talking to him. All of a sudden, there's just this random voice. Who's he talking to? Uh-huh. And he starts talking to it like he can do something about it, and you're like, is D crazy? And then he takes off the glove, and there's a face on his hand, and you're like, oh, shit, he's just talking to his hand which makes way more sense. They don't really deliver that well. So some shit has gone down, the world is fucked, and the monsters have kind of taken over. There's vampires everywhere, there's demons, there's random monsters, there's mutants. I don't know if this is a win for the X-Men or if they lost. I don't know if this is exactly the, the mutant equality that Charles Xavier was hoping for. It kind of looks like the Savage Land just erupted all over everything. The mecha future sucks. The movie is quite enjoyable because the story itself is very well delivered. It's not well voice acted, 
but it's well written. The story itself is solid. The story is very good. He's got to rescue Doris, kicks a bunch of ass, she gets taken, he has to fight off the snake bitches, gets away, kind of bitch slaps Lamika, takes her out, blows up a bunch of shit, loses her again because he gets stabbed in the chest, but his weird hand brings him back to life, and then he defeats the guy because his father is Dracula, and this other guy's just a vampire who's just a vampire. Big hat rundown. I feel everyone should watch this movie. You don't need to own it. It's kind of hard to find nowadays. I don't even know if it's on Blu-ray. I think it's worthy to be on Blu-ray, but as far as if it is or not, probably not. You're probably going to have to settle for the DVD. And like I said, just watch it. You don't need to own it at this point. It is really old. It has not aged well, but if you're a fan, a really hardcore fan, devout, believe in the 80s, then keep it, because it's awesome. You throw it in and be like, oh man, this thing's so shitty and awesome. It's fantastic enjoyment. My official rating and my unofficial rating system, watch it. You should see it. You should have this one under your belt. If you own it, great. If you don't own it, that's fine. But you do need to have seen it, because it's important. You will get so much more enjoyment out of the next Vampire Hunter D, because you're going to be like, wow, he looks so much better in the new one. But the story isn't as solid. That's how I feel. The story's not as solid in the second one. It's, it's still delivered very well, but it's not... It's just not this one. Hey, what's your favorite Vampire Hunter D, the first one or the second one? Well, if you've only seen one, then you can't make that comparison. So, put it below and let me know. See it any way you can. Rent it, buy it, borrow it, stream it, watch it. Awesome. Love it. 80s goodness yeah this has been any view by dave i of course am dave if you have any questions comments or confusions and suggestions put them below and i'll get back to you see you next time if i was a real vampire hunter i'd walk around like this but I'm not that cool. <laughs> and another thing, if Doris's father was a werewolf hunter, then why the fuck is she all shitty around werewolves? The werewolf just shows up, she freaks out. Didn't your dad teach you how to handle these things? What the fuck? D only puke sparkles. She doesn't need to sparkle to be a badass. You know when D sparkles? When he's getting stabbed to death, he like throws up little Edwards. He's all, eh. Right, but that's the only time D sparkles. Other than that, he's just a badass. You know what says badass on D? That sick ass cape and that big ass hat. And let's not forget about D's sword, which seems to get longer and shorter and straighter and curvier as the movie goes. But that's all right. It just goes to show you how badass he is. See my sword? <laughs> Doris is a slut. Starts off, you can see her panties through like the entire movie. The entire movie. You see her panties, she offers herself up to D right then. She's like, I don't have any money, but you can bang me. Right? Dang, bitch. Hey, this is my problem. Let's start with that. He does Han Solo it up. She's all, I love you. He's all, I know. Slut. It's terrible. Doris's little brother, Dan, the, you know, the little boy with the baguettes on his shoulder, seems to have gigantism. What, like, like Mr. Burns was giving to his baseball team and everyone's head was all big? He's got, like, gigantism. What's going on with Dan? He's sick. Dan is sick. That epic pan fluting. Probably not a pan flute. It's just a flute. She's getting hit in the face with the rock. She's all... <laughs> Epic pan flute. It's probably not even a flute. It's probably 80 synthesizers, because, you know, it's 85. The keytar is, is king. I do like how they have, like, old-school vampire rules, like when the vampire, when Magnus Lee first shows up, he introduces himself, and he's like, Good evening. My name is Count Magnus Lee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's not as creepy as that. That might have been a little creepy. So the vampires are the ruling aristocracy, and they're all polite nobility. Yes, being a vampire is the shit. Indeed.
right? Vampires. <laughs> it's true, the vampires are all about the fancy dinner party! From the left, Calpurnia! From the left, Calpurnia. How would I describe this movie? Delicious. Delightful. Delectable. That's a lot of D's. They don't talk with D's a bunch. It's not like, this is the problem, man. I saw some cyborg horses, but there was nobody from Jamaica in the future. I don't know what that means. Maybe Jamaica just didn't make it. <laughs> this is the problem, man. Did you know that little boy had bread on the shoulders? It's like, it's like the perfect animated B-movie. It's like a high-grade B-movie. It's like if Bruce Campbell were being D. That's a great combo right there. They should get Bruce Campbell to be Vampire Hunter D. That would be awesome. He's not beautiful enough, but he's badass enough because he's Bruce Campbell. Who else is going to be king of the B-movies? Bruce Campbell. There is no Asian Bruce Campbell. Sonny Chiba. <laughs> he would look even more ridiculous in this hat.